this hat's this hat's just a little bit too small for me. <laughs> Hey folks, if you don't follow Jazz and Grass on Instagram, then you don't know about all of the really cool Tony Rice clips that I've been releasing tabs for over there. Just for the uninitiated, Jazz and Grass is an Instagram account where me and my friend Lyman post a new guitar lick every single day. My bluegrass licks come out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Lyman's jazz licks come out on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. It's all free, it's all good stuff. By the way, if you don't have Instagram, you can still hear the licks. Just go to lessonswithmarcel.com, you scroll down till it says Jazz and Grass right there on the homepage, you click on whichever lick you want to hear. Cool, so almost every lick in the month of October was from a famous Tony Rice tune, and I very stupidly joked about calling it Tony Tober. So let's do our Tony Tober recap. Think of this as like Tony Rice speed dating. All right, neat. We're kind of just going to go off script here, and I'm going to talk about the, uh, the licks as they came out. So let me just find them somewhere here on my computer, and we can get to that. Just got to get my headphones on a little easier when you're not wearing a hot dog costume. Cool. October 8th, I posted a lick that went a little something like this. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's that probably sounds pretty weird to you uh, if you're not familiar with that. So if you look through my past videos, you'll find a video where I learn how to play Bugle Call Rag. I believe it was uh, a comment from a subscriber suggested I learn it. And then I tried to tab it out really quick and do a performance of it. And I had some stupid time limit, just a couple days or something to finish it. It was a fun video though. And that, uh, that heart part is really interesting. It's still strange to me that he starts that line on, what is that? D sharp, E flat. Definitely something that you should play with if you want to do. Although it's kind of something you got to drop in that moment, right? It really only fits in a, in a gap where you got that stop time and you just do something wild. So definitely don't try to use it over too many chords. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's look at let's look at the lick from October 10th now. <laughs> So <laughs> I don't think I played this very well, but that's okay. This is, of course, Church Street Blues. It's the, the Tony Rice standard, right? Uh, I think everyone starts playing bluegrass, they find Tony Rice, they find Church Street Blues, and then they want to learn it so bad. Some of us make it just barely closer than others. Uh, I don't think anyone can really do it like Tony can do it. But yeah, so there, there's quite a bit to talk about here. There's, um, there's a lot of weird pick strokes. So if I'm looking through that, uh, the pickup in that first measure, I think all the pick strokes are fairly normal. Moving on to the, the second measure, the second full measure, um, where you have that bit of an F chord where you got 3-3 uh, three, three on your A string and your D string, I believe Tony is playing a down, down, up right there. So it's just like I've talked about in multiple videos now. I talked about that in the Never Meant to Be video and in the Port Tobacco video, how when he's got three notes on three ascending strings, he'll play down, down, up, and then you know resolve it later. And I think that uh, looking at the rest of this, uh, funny how sometimes it's hard to talk about how you play stuff that you've played for so long, but he's got three open strings, the D string, G string, and B string. I believe that's down, down, up, and then there's a little C chord fragment, the uh, just a C arpeggio. Um, third fret on your A string, second fret on your D string, and open on your G string. I believe that's a down, down, up as well. But yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit of Church Street Blues. Man, that's hard stuff. I guess I could have written the pick strokes in there if I was being real nice, but I'm a mean guy. If you're interested in more Church Street Blues, I actually do have a video on Church Street Blues on this channel as well. It's called Four Things You Can Steal from Church Street Blues. It's an old video. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm wearing backwards hats yet. Cool, this is uh, October... 12th now. Oh, <laughs> and just like I said, let's take a listen. <laughs> All right, cool. This is Tony Rice, Never Meant to Be. Another beautiful track. Just released a video on it a couple uh, couple weeks ago, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. Definitely go watch that video if you want to learn more about this tune. It's very Church Street Blues-like. All of the picking in this passage, I believe, is straight, if I remember my facts from the video well enough. He doesn't do anything too weird here, but uh, man, is that stuff hard to play. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, October 15th, what do we got now? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
All right, of course, this is a, a little snippet of Manzanita. Also done a video about it. Uh, there was four things you should steal from Manzanita and how to play Manzanita. Definitely go watch those if you're interested. These opening arpeggios are so tough to get smooth where he's got two notes per string. It's so hard to make that feel not chopped up. And I don't feel like any of the work I've done online with this tune has really nailed it, really made it feel as natural as Tony does. Maybe that's just a nitpicking thing. Maybe you never notice that, but that, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, let's keep moving. Moving on through these licks. I do have this entire break tabbed out too, the Blue Ridge Cabin home break. I've thought about doing a video on it, but uh, I haven't yet, but this is a, a sweet Tony Rice version of a sweet tune. What's really cool about this is you can see how Tony kicks things off. Uh, and he tends to hit these strong uh, off beats. The first note that you have, the open D string, happens on an and of a beat, right? One and. Ba -do, 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 do right? And that feels super nice. Also, we get this uh, eighth note chromatic walk up to the uh, D note, so B, C, C sharp, D. We know that from a banjo kick, but Tony just uh, speeds it up, right? Normally when a banjo does that, we get it in quarter notes. Tony's giving it to us in eighth notes here. We also get this uh, little C to F sharp uh, hammer on pull off idea. Tony does that a lot over D chords. He's doing it over a G chord here though. Right. And then he plays with a bunch of thirds. We have some dominant sevens thrown in as well. Fairly straight stuff. He kind of ends with a, a G run kind of idea over the C chord. Not, uh, not too wild, but this is just really classic Tony stuff. You know, he's mixing and matching a little bit, but this is the kind of stuff he plays and excels at. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll do a video on the solo sometime. October 19th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is cool. I believe I have the whole tab for this solo too. Um, I haven't done anything with it, but I might in the future. Um, this is uh, this is exactly the same thing that I said before. Right before he kicks this, right in our pickup measure, um, we have one and, and that's how he starts all of these uh, kicks in this like kind of classic Tony Rice period. It feels so good. It's so nice. And I don't even do it when I play casually with people. I should. I love the way it sounds. I don't know why I don't. Watch out for those triplets there. Of course, um, I talk about these kind of triplets uh, that come up. I talk about them in my bluegrass triplet series. I think there's, is there two or three videos in that series? Yeah, I talk about them there along with a bunch of other kinds of triplets that you find in bluegrass music. So definitely check that out if you're interested in that sound. Definitely works really well over a bouncy tune like this one. And I love that kind of tune. Anyone who knows me or seen me know that I always play Why You Been Gone So Long because it has this exact same kind of feel and it feels so good. Um, keep on moving. October 22nd. <laughs> Of course, this is the old train break. It's wonderful. In fact, recently I had a group of friends over uh, and uh, another guitar player, his name's Brad. He refreshed my memory on how this goes because I had kind of forgotten. I also have the tab for this opening break. It's not very long. At some point, I'll do something with it, find a way that I can release it to you guys, maybe do a video or something. But this is just another classic one. This is such a hard break to pull off smoothly. It's not, it's not hard note choice wise or fingering wise necessarily or anything else like that. He's just created this passage where he has one note on four descending strings and it doesn't feel like he's playing them all with upstrokes necessarily like he's not economy picking this he's alternate picking it it feels like to me at least and uh, that makes it really hard to play but really rewarding if you can play it smoothly the rest of the line uh, suffers from the same thing that I talked about in Manzanita a lot of it is two notes per string which can make things feel really chopped up and pentatonic -y, you know kind of straight out of the box kind of sounding um, and it could take some work to make that feel a little more smooth Tony always does a great job with that that's something that a lot of other people including myself struggle with as players cool break um, bother me and I'll uh, release this in some way so you can get the tab. Um, that's the only way you get things out of me if you bother me. All right, let's keep going. Here we go. We got uh, October 24th now. I'm trying to slam through these all so I can show them to you in a video that's not too long. <laughs> All 
All right, there's there's a lot to say about this lake. You don't have this uh, little, I, I wouldn't call it a book. What would you call this? More like a pamphlet or something? It's only like 14 pages, but uh, it's called Tony's Choice, Licks, Kickoffs, and Solos, taught by Tony Rice. I don't know who did the transcribing. Oh, here we go. Music transcription by John McGann. At the very back, find the music for Fish Scale. And he writes it all closed, and that doesn't really sound right to me, so I, I rewrote the uh, opening melody piece. If Tony Rice does play it closed, then more power to Tony, but uh, I certainly found it, of course, more difficult to play it that way on acoustic guitar. He writes this opening bit in 9-4, and I got, I got a little bit of beef with that. I think that that's uh, not a real easy time signature to conceptualize. I'd rather read a measure of 4-4 four, four, and then a measure of 5-4. Of course, I, I wrote mine in a measure of 4-4 four, four, and a measure of 5-4, and the piece gets crazier than that. That's not even the weirdest time signature that you might get. But that's essentially what's going on here. Um, like I said, I've moved the fingerings so they're on more open strings instead of a closed position on two strings, basically. The rhythms are very strange. And of course, there's this backing, ba bum ba bum I, I had a fun time trying to write that out. Anyway, yeah, check out this, uh, this little booklet. Uh, if you can get your hands on it, it comes with a CD too. Just don't expect a ton of content. Like I said, only 14 pages, so. I've mentioned this book in the past. Uh, I think I mentioned it in one of my Manzanita videos. And I got a little bit of beef with this book because it's got some silly mistakes in it. Yeah, there's there's a couple uh, there's a couple tabs we already went over that uh, they, there are versions of in here. Uh, some of them aren't very good though. And for instance, the Don't Give Your Heart to a Rambler break is in here. Oh, Old Train's in here as well. I think that, you know, besides the Manzanita one, the other ones are, you know, 90% there. So they, they need some small corrections. But I mean, this book has a ton of content though. This book is what like 70 pages 70 pages of tony rice tabs compared to the 15 pages in the last one all right cool moving on let's go on to october 26th <laughs> All right, cool. This is the uh, this is the Mule Skinner break, and uh, Tony Rice does a super cool lick to end it. You can see in this lick, the last two measures are you know kind of fluff. You know, we we do that stuff all the time, so we don't have to worry about that too much. In the first measure, you can see we have the interval of a sixth, which is kind of a big deal. It doesn't happen a lot like that in bluegrass. Sometimes we include it in our country phrasing, but yeah, if that fourth fret on the D string up to third fret on the B string, it's a little less common. Yeah, he's hitting uh, some some interesting chord tones there. He's hanging on the seven. Then I think what really does it for me is that to get from D to G, he, he makes like he's already resolving to G, like he's already there. And then he plays F sharp to G, kind of at the peak of that third measure. You know, that's weird. It's like, <laughs> I'm already in G, and then here I am, I'm coming into G again. And it feels it feels really good. It sounds really cool. It's kind of hard to uh, get your fingers to work on that. It takes a little bit of thinking to get your fingers set up in the right way to play that. Um, so definitely think about that. I think I might even fumble a little bit in the video. I don't remember. That move from F, F sharp to G on the E string is just... Just weird and cool. At October 29th, what you got for me? <laughs> this is the uh, cold on the shoulder uh, break ending here. Turn around, wherever you want to call it. Very Tony. Uh, in that first measure, we get those op beats on those D notes. Boo doo da da boo da brown brown. Of course, hopping up there and uh, hammering on from the uh, the F to the G. Then we got all of these uh, C sharp to C to B flat movement. Tony, like I said before, does that all the time over the D chords. He's doing it over a D chord here. In the previous passage that we saw, I think that was Blue Ridge Cabin Home. He was doing it over a G chord, and that was a little odd for him. Of course, we have the uh, me and my guitar kind of motif where he hits these uh you know triads somewhere especially hammering onto that third it's very me and my guitar but you already know that if you're a tony fan i need to tell you it ends with a normal g run it's interesting because all of the it feels like all of the elements aren't super unique it's all stuff that we've kind of seen before but tony has this way of putting it together of assembling it that feels very unique and exciting and you watch all of these other people play a bunch of tony rice licks in a row and they feel like they're just playing a bunch of tony rice licks in a row tony still feels like he's playing a melody and crafting something and playing a line. That's really interesting. All right, that's enough of that. Let's look at what I posted on Halloween. <laughs> It's 
So of course we're ending we're ending with a plug again. Um, yeah, this is uh, Poor Tobacco. This is the head of Poor Tobacco. Wonderful tune. It's, I think it's my favorite Tony Rice instrumental. Yeah, I, I did a video on it um, a couple weeks back. I did a how to play Poor Tobacco video right after I did Manzanita, and uh, I was really excited to make that video and figure out kind of what these chords were and what the best fingerings for all these notes were and all of that kind of conversation was really fun to I don't know figure out while I'm staying up too late playing guitar. <laughs> but definitely learn Port Tobacco if you want to get more into that progressive Tony Rice sound, I guess you could say. Anyway, that's Tony Tober. Yeah, those those are all of the uh, passages I posted, all of the tabs. I know that wasn't a lesson, but if you liked hanging out with the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, there's a couple things you can do. Of course, you can like this video, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment. Down below, you can find me around the web. You can follow Jazz and Grass on Instagram. You can also check out my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com. There's a bunch of merch on there for you to buy. I got t-shirts. I'm not wearing my t-shirt today, but I swear I have t-shirts. There's also the tab store where you can get a ton of Tony Rice tabs for free, along with Molly Tuttle tabs or Jake Workman tabs or Jamie Bryant tabs. So definitely check that out. I'll see you next week for more bluegrass guitar stuff. When that train comes tumbling down From the mountains cold We bring them back